What is this? It's soft. Is that foam? I don't want to squeeze it too much because I don't want to crack the paint, but it's soft. Look guys, I'm pretty sure I'm going to get a bunch of hate for saying this, but I'm pretty sure getting in and out of a AutoZam AZ1 is easier than getting in and out of a Suzuki Cappuccino, especially with its roof on. With the roof off, probably it's easier in the Cappuccino. I want to show you why. So there, I'm parked next to my K truck. There's a reasonable amount of space there. I mean, you just parked next to another car in a parking lot. So open my door. The door is open this far. It's a good arm's length from the, the body of the car to the edge of the door there. It's hard to get out. Like, I don't know. It's because like this really low roof and then like, you have to kind of flex around like here to kind of inch out. You don't have that problem in the AZ-1 because the door goes up and you have it a complete door hole to kind of get out of. The door hole in the AZ-1 I feel like is also bigger lengthwise. There's nothing for me to hold on to. I'm gonna put my hand down here kind of like the AZ-1. Now I gotta bend my feet through the little triangle there. And then hold the wheel. My knee is now hitting the steering wheel and this is the smaller Momo wheel. It's not pleasant. This is how I can get in. Uh, I'm gonna show you where my knee was hitting the steering wheel here. Like that. I get caught on the wheel, get caught in the steering column. Oh, ooh, no, I hit my door. See, you see all these problems? <laughs> Oh no, was that from me? Crap. Okay, I want to show you guys what it looks like on the outside. Open the door. It's easier to step in. Oh. And then pull your leg up and tuck it. Then you close the door. Getting out, open the door, kind of flips out again. But this roof line is right here and you gotta like contort, bend, and then twist and rotate to come out. When you're getting in, like right here, my shoulder's in this thing, right at the, the what would this be, the, the B pillar, and my head is right, like the roof line's right at my neck here. Once I'm in here, and tuck myself in, it's okay, it's not that bad, but if I remove the roof, the roof is removed, that makes this all easier. This is like AZ-1 territory now. So, you rotate your leg out, because my head can kind of just go up here and not whack on the roof, I can just squeeze out and walk out. That makes it reasonable. But removing the roof is not a viable um, method of getting in and out of the car. I mean, unless you really have to. It probably makes sense to demonstrate it on this too. As you can see, I am right up against here. This is like nearly the minimum clearance we need to get in and out of the car. But you can see, I just step right in and I'm inside. I can close the door. Open the door, step right out, walk out, close the door, go away. There's not much room here, just one of me, one person's width, and up we go. One foot in, sit in, scoop in, turn around. I still have the original size uh, steering wheel, I believe it's 320 millimeter or 340, I don't know, it's the big one. So stepping out, I can go straight out and just step right out. I mean, there's still a little bit of contorting, but not bad. It's a little bit different since I can't step forward this way, but I should still be able to get in without knocking the camera over. And I'm inside. I am making a quick delivery in my Suzuki Cappuccino, and I just put this in here in the passenger seat. But I realized there is more room in an AZ-1 than a Cappuccino. Now, why do I say this? Because this, yes, you get a little cubby like shelf thing back here. That's not big enough to stick my kid's foldable um, stroller. Now you're gonna say, oh, the AZ-1 doesn't have a trunk, blah, blah, blah. Okay, yeah, you're right. The AZ-1 doesn't have a trunk. I don't believe this is big enough to fit that stroller either. Only one way to find out. I have the stroller right here. Open the trunk. I need to get new springs. The trunk doesn't stay open. There's no way. All right. Aha, uh -huh. 
Aha! There's no way this fits in there. All right, that's good to know. Maybe volumetrically, there is more space, but functionally, my AZ-1 has more space, or my Cara has more space. Very good to know. So my car is being worked on, don't mind that it's naked and there's a hole right here, but uh, this is the gray bag that we usually stuff full of stuff. You can see this easily fits back there. Like that's not even full. And then this seat, this slides forward. I presume this is so you can access the tools, a little paperwork pouch that you have and your spare tire when it's actually mounted there. I don't want my spare tire there. Then, just put your seat back. Look at that. Whole stroller and an AZ-1. And then I still have my backpack. Pretend the box of tools is my kid sitting in his seat. Um, I have a car seat that mounts there. And I still have the whole footwell for him to kick and, and put other stuff if we need to. We still have more cubby hole space. We still have the entire rear shelf unused. And we still have the front with some storage space. It's not weather tight. So it's not great, but I'm, I've never stored anything in the front. I'm not just yanking your chains. You could definitely put more stuff in here. Definitely put more stuff in here. I'm just saying that I find my car up way more practical than this cappuccino because when I bring my kid to places and whatnot, like I want to be able to have my stroller just in case I need to like push him around. I don't want to carry him. He's like 35 pounds. So the cappuccino is great in its own way. It's just different. I prefer my car on my AZ-1. Of course, you know, I'm biased because I've had that thing for longer, but I mean, the cappuccino is great too. You could pop the roof off, like, come on. And it's a four position roof. So coupe, Targa, T-top, and full convertible. I mean, how could you go wrong? That's awesome in a little tiny little thing like this. So, hey, a cappuccino is fun too, but if you need to carry like larger items, it doesn't really fit if you have to have another passenger. That's all I got for now on this little cappuccino. I mean, I'm still driving around. I actually got to the point where that much fuel is left and I took a left turn too hard. Yeah, I took a left turn way too hard and I probably starved my fuel pump of fuel and it was just like, it, it refused to accelerate. And I'm like, oh, I remember this because my, my car had that on my auto X days, autocross days, where I was turning too hard and I couldn't accelerate because the engine was starved of fuel. It was kind of sputtering a little bit. And then once the fuel kind of settled back down and it was able to suck up beyond the air bubble that it had, it was able to go again. So it's time for me to go fill up. Uh, let's see, let's, I also should want to calculate what's the fuel economy of one of these things. I mean, it, it doesn't really matter to me, but I like to know these numbers. I forgot, I just reset this, but um, basically 5.6 gallons got me about 272 kilometers. One thing I am liking more than my car right here, look at this. Power steering is freaking awesome. I mean, NK cars is not that hard to steer, but you know, it's a nice break. This this automatic cappuccino, I'm really happy with it. Like, it's just, it's just a place for me to chill. I can just kind of just drive around at my own pace, do whatever I want to do. And it's quiet, so I don't feel like I have to zoom around and room, room everywhere. And look at that. I'm just gonna go reverse like it's nothing. It's just nothing. Simple task, just like a normal car. Just very small. Here, you can see me pulling up next to my Escalade here. <laughs> my mirror is barely above the tire. It's like that. And there, you can look up at people while they look down upon us. Yeah, that's uh, that's the situation here. Subscribe for more K-Car stuff. Like I said, there will be plenty more content coming. I got a whole pile of stuff just kind of backed up now. Backed up in videos.